Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of A Day in the Life of a Coach. My name is Mercy Maglino, and with me today is Katia Tripo, Swiss by origin, living all over the world, citizen of the world, as she says, and one of our um, graduates of the uh, our coach certification program at the International Coach Academy. So welcome, Ta- Katia, and how are you today? Hi, Mercy. I'm very good. Thank you. Thanks for having me today. It was very nice to talking you. to you. Yeah, all the way there in Montreal. I'm not far. I'm like sort of down the road a bit here in New York. So you graduated. First, tell us a little bit about your ICA experience. You graduated in 2010? Exactly. December. Mm-hmm. And uh, actually, how it happened was that... I decided to really look for coaching because that was something that was very obvious for me. After 15 years in human resources, Mm -hmm. I realized that what I liked was people. Yeah. And because of the economy, Mm -hmm. the corporate world, people was put, you know, at a lesser importance for many companies and I started to dislike my positions. So. I had to make a career choice and then it was very obvious that it was to really focus on the people, helping them with their career, helping them to reinvent a career if they had to, and find new jobs. Mm. I must admit that I had fired quite a lot the past years between 2008 and 10. Mm-hmm. And that's when I really realized, no, I can't get up in the morning knowing I'm going to do that again. Yeah. So I really searched for a school and I found ICA and then I must say I found Nick <laughs> who honestly convinced me. Mm-hmm. He answered all my questions, reassured me, talked about the program. I realized it was exactly what mm-hmm. I was looking for. Mm-hmm. Perfect fit. Very flexible in the hours. I could really choose my pace and here I went. I mm-hmm. signed on. and did it all and met great people and yeah. enjoyed really every little bit of it. Mm-hmm. And one thing I must add, because I know some coaches with no certifications, mm-hmm. it makes a difference. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. but I have to say that. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, you were coaching in a sense before you came to our certification program. You had a yeah. skill set that involved coaching to some degree, right? Oh, I was coaching a lot in human resources. You yeah. have to do that. And uh, when I was, unfortunately, terminating employees, mm-hmm. I was always helping them. I was always, yeah. you know, sitting with them, making sure that they had enough confidence to look for another job. Mm-hmm. And still, I still learned so much at ICA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that experience. Um, I, too, was coaching prior to coming here. And it... It really did make a difference to have some of that structure. And never mind that we, you and me and others around us from all over the world get to interact, which gives us a, such yep. a richness to the coaching. It's even hard to articulate it, isn't it? Um, but I want to make sure people know that you referred to Nick, who is um, one of our staff and faculty. He trains here for International Coach Academy. and. He, he's just one of those people where his passion for coaching, yep. for uh, International Coach Academy's program, he exudes it. So um, I'm glad to hear that you had such a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Well, he's very contagious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Contagious is a great way of putting it. I, I agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. So you've come to coaching and you uh, took your credential from International Coach Academy went to the International Coach Federation and was certified by them. So you've earned your credential from them. Good for you. So Mm -hmm. tell me what um, your day looks like as a coach. Oh, wow. It looks so much better than in the past. (laughs) Now I do what I love. So, and it's really, you know, taking care of people and making sure that they have the life they really want. Mm -hmm. So, a day starts usually, it depends, very early because I have today clients pretty much everywhere. I have mm-hmm. people in Singapore, in Europe, in the US. So, because of time difference, today with Skype, you have no frontier. Mm-hmm. 
easy to just coach anyone, but yeah. time still exists. So yeah. I, I like my client in Singapore, but I get up early for him. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, um, well, when you are a coach, because you're also like a business owner at the end of the day, you mm. don't just coach all day long. You always have to make sure that you get new clients, that you have a good website, because media is important today, I believe. Mm. We all know that, so um, always trying to find new material. You have to reinvent the wheel sometimes. It's like we learn at ICA how to get tools, Mm -hmm. and my tools are really not static. I'm really working on them all the time to fine-tune them, to customize them Mm -hmm. for my clients because not everybody is the same, and I need to sometimes change slight little things mm-hmm. to talk to the sensitivity of the individual I have in front of me. Yeah, that's and, great. Uh, I mean, people, you know, think it's it's interesting that, that you have that ability to not just only be agile with your tools, um, but to see that there's an agility to them, that this isn't a rigid process or formulaic. Um, your the Katia comes out in what you're doing and makes you the unique coach that you are. So while we all do coaching, it's it's like we all dance, but it doesn't look the same when we all do it. But it's dancing, you know. So I I really like uh, that point of it's agile, it's flexible. You can customize it for each client. Great. Yeah, we all have our little own moves. Yes, sometimes. we do. We all have our signature moves. That's a great yeah. way of looking at it. So, what were some of the coaching tools you um, developed as part of your learning here at International Coach Academy? Uh, for the ICA, I had focused on positive versus negative perception mm. because perception becomes, for many, reality. And suddenly you realize that there are many realities, <laughs> which should not be at the end of the day, because mm. technically it should be facts. <laughs> so I had developed that tool where I've, I guide people to sort of change hats. I don't know if you've heard of uh, the Bono Six hats. Yes. Mm-hmm. I used to use that in business also during some meetings to force people to sometimes change shoes to mm-hmm. understand the other one's opinion. and point of view mm-hmm. and it's really to help people to realize that their perception is not necessarily the reality so by asking them like okay now forget about all the it won't work start with just everything that could and will work mm-hmm. it's only see other open doors yeah yeah by asking them to sometimes use different aspects in the way they think, like curiosity, creativity, mm-hmm. to push a bit the limit. Yeah. You really manage to have very negative people yeah. turn to first more neutral, like, mm-hmm. hmm, you may be right, maybe, <laughs> maybe I can work. Right. To now I found a way to make yeah. it work. Yeah. Yeah, it's this. It's you know, you change the hat, like or change, step into somebody else's shoes, their perspective. Maybe it moves to a maybe first. Where I mean, at least you're now considering that it could be. Uh, to hey, I I actually see what I have to do. Great. Yeah. So positive versus negative. 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 But two really steps where mm-hmm. you need to help them go through the process. They cannot keep the same mindset. Mm-hmm. And people are very playful. They like the idea of changing glasses or hats. <laughs> yeah. To realize that they really do see things differently. Yeah. But if you just tell them to do things differently, they will look at you like, I can't. Yes, yeah. It still is blue. Yeah. <laughs> it know? opens up it opens up their minds. And that's a great power tool. So that's a ICA power tool is taking two perspectives and pe- walking people through the steps of how do I shift so that I can unearth those many, many possibilities. Great. Yeah. So what did you do your research paper on? Well, that was the most obvious choice for me. It mm-hmm. was how much coaching can be a huge help in career transition. Mm. Because I really know that 
domain extremely well. I was on the other side of the table. I was hiring people also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I did not <Yeah>. fire, <laughs> but I did hire in the good years. So I know what as HR we are looking for the subtleties, you know, in the choice of verbs and words and all these kind of things. And it's very hard to see what we don't know mm. as a person. We have that blind spot. Yeah. And some people end up being completely desperate, like, I can't find a job, something is wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And it's not with them, it's with the way they try to convey their message. It's sometimes just a very technical CV. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's the complete lack of clarity of what they really want. Yeah. Yeah. And you feel it during an interview, it's like, okay, you're capable, but you're not wanting mm. to do the job. Yeah. I'm not going to hire you mm -hmm. because some people have a tendency to repeat just pattern. Yeah. They will go for the same job over and over without ever asking like, do I like it? Do I like the environment? Do I like that corporate world? Yeah. And so I we might not like it when, f for example, uh, I lose my job or mm -hmm. I'm you know, made redundant. But it is the time to ask, what am I doing this for? Do I love doing it or am I stuck in a pattern? And a coach like yourself can help people ask that question maybe before that significant event of a wake-up call happens. So, yeah, career transition, thinking about it in terms of what do I want to do, not just mm -hmm. what I've done or what I know how to do. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And really interestingly, I, I noticed that I'm more doing career reinvention than real career transition because yeah. many people, once they start to really ask themselves those questions, they realize much more about themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's a great journey. Yeah, definitely. And, and one that you sound like you've been on yourself. And so mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 that must inform your process and your connection with people. Yeah, wonderful. So mm -hmm. what was your coaching model? We here devise our own coaching model. I'm at, you know, ICA. What was yours? Oh, my God. It has changed a lot. <laughs> so is mine. Go ahead. <laughs> I love I it. If you start somewhere, it's a wonderful journey. Go ahead. My, my first coaching model, the one I developed at ICA, I had a few actually that I developed mm -hmm. during ICA because I'm obviously, obviously creative. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, I started with unlock, you know, crack the code, unlock your potential. Again, it was going around, carry transition or reinvention. It was right. really like you can do way more than what you think. And it was very heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of deep. <laughs> yeah, as a process, but uh, over time I moved to something that is so much lighter. Now I'm working with just love, oh. which is, you know, to learn who you are, own your life, vanquish your fear, and exceed your expectation in life. Oh, beautifully said. But the unlock had the same principle. It's all about first knowing who you are. Mm hmm how can you trust yourself if you don't know your own limits mm -hmm. and your own talent and how far you can go and how resourceful you are? Mm -hmm. And once you really know yourself, you're way more aware of your own mechanism and that helps you cope with other people too. You're no longer a victim of a situation. You become really the owner of your own life and your own reaction and yeah. decisions. And that's my goal. When I have a client, I really want to make sure that they leave me with a new best friend, them. Yeah. And they feel happy about who they are and in total confidence that no matter what happens in life, they will be okay because they are who they are. They are who they are and that's okay, exactly. Exactly. Wow. Um, I love the, again, the agility comes in. I know a lot of new coaches in there, you know, I guess I was a little bit like that too, that, you know, how am I going to do this? And you hear someone like yourself who dabbled in many models and over time has really 
simplified it maybe you know I think of it like a marination of a sauce you start out with this much and as you you know stir it up and change it it gets richer and richer and simpler L-O-V-E how simple is that it's beautiful mm -hmm. it's very so, simple. I gotta ask you this though because on your website you've co-authored a book um, breaking it's the glass ceiling without a hammer for women, yeah. I love the title. <laughs> so you are indeed a creative person. Tell me a little story about what precipitated the book and um, what, if people were interested, what's in the book. Okay. Um, no, I got approached for that book because um, Linda Eastman, who is the publisher and editor, um, has a woman publishing network organization. And her area is really woman in management, woman in business. It's all about women. <laughs> yeah. And um, because I was uh, also blogging on LinkedIn, and I, I like emotional intelligence because it's mm. something that can help so much people to move further, even in their career, big time, yeah. by the way, that she asked me if I would be interested you know, to, to share on the topic. So my topic in the book is really emotional intelligence at work. Mm -hmm. It's true, it's meant to be for women, but I believe that everybody should be reading that book because mm -hmm. it helps both parties to understand each other better. <laughs> yes, it is. It's a, a, a heightened sense of communication skills, which is embedded in coaching. Um, you know, things like really listening, listening to between the line things, um, emotional intelligence. It's in our curriculum a little bit more about it. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's it really is a very interesting field of study. And when you read about it, you know, I haven't read your book, but I definitely want to read it. Um, when you read about it, though, you're like, oh, yeah, right. That's why this person seems to be more successful than this person. They have this ability to connect or um, sit back or listen or know when to do those things. You know, the timing aspect. I love it. It's an incredible field of study. Well, you know, the thing that we all have in common, no matter what, mm. is people. Yeah. We all yeah. relate to people. If you are a CEO, and you don't know how to convey your message and your passion and your vision to the people, you're alone. Mm -hmm. You are the head of the ship, but you are alone. Mm -hmm. If you want people to work for you, with you, mm -hmm. you need to be able to know who they are and talk to them in a manner that they will hear you. Yeah, yeah. That's a great part. So that's, that's uh, tell me the name of the book again so people, if they want to dash off and get it. <laughs> It's how to break the glass ceiling without a hammer, <laughs> strategies for women. And we are actually 32 orders from different okay. countries, each using different aspects in business. Oh, Mine okay. is really emotional intelligence, but everybody has a different aspect in business. Interesting. Some will talk just about courage, some will use about perseverance. But it's, it's like a good tool because mm -hmm. we all need like a recipe, many different ingredients to be successful. Mm -hmm. It's not like a magic yeah, formula you know, yeah. One that will work for everything. Yeah, exactly. There is no one size fits all when it comes to development. <laughs> yeah, That's a great idea. All right, so I think I have like one more question here, and that would be if you had one thing to say to people um, considering coaching or about coaching, what, what, what would that be, Katia? Katia? Well, coaching is all about people. So make sure that you are really willing to give, mm -hmm. not just to make a living out of it and receive, because in order to really be successful in coaching, mm -hmm. you have to give. Beautiful. Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. So this has been great. I want to again appreciate you. So tell me where you're, uh, tell us where the website is. How can we learn more about you? Uh, well, it's uh, www.upwithlifecoaching.com. Okay. And I also have a Facebook page, Up With Life Coaching, Twitter, uh, well, whatever you have to do today to be visible. All right. Still. So it should be really easy to find you. 
Yeah, because I kept the same name all over. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's very um it's very mel- melodious your name, Katia Tlupo. It's just beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I know I have to practice my French. I haven't been there yet, but I'm getting there, so I'm going to practice it. So I just wanted to say thanks to Katia for joining me today, uh, telling us a little bit about her experience as a coach and a day in the life of a coach. If there's one thing you know, um, you're thinking about, a dream or two, she would be the person to talk to. So find her on the web, Facebook, anywhere that we hang out, or just stay with us. Uh, Katia will be with us for a live question and answer in the uh, live call in the very near future. Thank you, Katia. Thank you very much, Mercy. Bye-bye now. Bye.